Welcome to WISE 2023. My name is Jose Fabadri, and I'm the chair of the Hong Kong Financial Services Business Continuity Management, also known as HKFSBCM. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this whole industry simulation exercise, or as we call it, WISE. WISE is one of the key initiatives of HKFSBCM to ensure that we can bring together the financial services sector under the banner of training and development to stress test our individual and joint crisis response. So what's different about WISE 2023? This is the first exercise of its kind to focus on operational resilience outcomes. That's taking our crisis management teams through an incident, considering the impact of the scenario through the lens of critical business services. My name is Ben White, and it's my pleasure to be the exercise director for this exercise this year. So what are the objectives for WISE 2023? Firstly, to assess the ability of participating firms to respond to a systemic impact of cyber and other threats to the financial sector in Hong Kong. Secondly, to measure current capability of each participating firm against the industry-wide crisis management team capability maturity model. Thirdly, to assess the ability of the sector and financial authorities to respond to major operational disruption caused by a cyber attack, particularly looking at decision making and collective action. And lastly, to assess the effectiveness of participant organisations to formulate a coherent communication strategy relating to a cyber incident. The scenario for WISE 2023 revolves around a cyber attack. It is using a worm and it is delivered by a sophisticated threat actor, in this instance called the Shadow Collective. This group is an eco-hacktivist group who wants to disrupt the financial sector in Hong Kong due to their continued support of the fossil fuels industry. As it has a touch point in every firm within financial services, it is an easy way for the threat actor to make sure that they can get their malware into the systems. And as it enters these systems, it behaves and affects these firms in a different way. Operationally, every firm infected by this virus is finding business as usual severely disrupted. Communications amongst the sector are key as they understand the consequences of the attack and the effect it's having across the wider financial services sector in Hong Kong. The exercise format itself is four hours in total. Following this exercise briefing at 1.30, we will be going straight into what we are calling phase one of the exercise. Um, and that's when the index will begin to play through. We will be playing through the exercise in real time until um, around 1500, where we will pause um, and there'll be a clear stated time jump, where we'll be jumping to the scenario time of tomorrow morning. And this is to enable us to play out some of the realistic but plausible scenarios and to ensure that we can uh, really look at those operational resilience impact tolerances. Um, and that time jump will enable us to really consider what will have happened overnight and into the next morning. So after the time jump, the time will actually be 09.30 on the 17th of November. We will then have around another 90 minutes of exercise play against the index um, and the scenario. And then we will be stopping the exercise at 16.30 when a really important activity needs to take place in the hot debrief. And the hot debrief is there to get your collective views immediately after the exercise. What did you, what went well, and what immediate lessons are there to learn? So please ensure you stay around after the exercise um, and your facilitator or evaluator will then run you through that really important hot debrief. And the intent is uh, for everyone, or the exercise to be complete by 1700. A bit of information around the roles and responsibilities in today's exercise so you know who to contact. It's probably easiest to start with a player and of course a player is any person deemed to be playing in the exercise. The players have had no role in the management or delivery of the exercise and everything the players do in this exercise should be simulating what they would do for real in the event of an actual crisis within the constraints of the exercise bubble that we've provided through the exercise portal. 
You've then got a facilitator who should be with you either remotely or in the room and their role is to facilitate the exercise on my behalf um, at your location. They will be delivering um, some additional briefing points to you but they're also the eyes and ears from exercise control um, of what's happening within your organisation so that we can best support the delivery of the exercise and ensure that your organisation meets the exercise objectives. We've then got evaluators. Now those evaluators may be um, observing your crisis management team meetings remotely or they may be there in the room with you and their role is probably the most important. It's to ensure that we can capture the lessons from this exercise against a comprehensive evaluation uh, framework and they also will be working with the facilitator to conduct the debrief sessions immediately at the end of this exercise. And last but not least, we have scenario leads. Those scenario leads have been working for months to develop the scenario and the injects for your organisation today. And they're sitting back in exercise control with me, with the scenario leads from all the other firms, so that we collectively can work together to deliver a, a realistic and credible exercise. And it's those scenario leads that will be in constant communication with your facilitators to ensure that you can get the most out of this exercise. We've got some exercise rules, and these rules are there to ensure we can get the most from this exercise. Number one, this isn't a test. The scenario is fictitious, and it's merely a vehicle to allow you as a participant to rehearse your thinking and decision making in a safe to fail environment. Number two, please treat this exercise as real. In all exercises, there's elements of unreality, or you'll be sitting there thinking, oh, this would never happen. Please go with the scenario. We are delivering this exercise to meet the exercise outcomes and objectives. So stay as far as you can at a strategic level of engagement and please go along with the scenario. Thirdly, your experience. As I said, all exercises have got some elements of unreality. Playing your role and using your knowledge and common sense to fill any information gaps will overcome these. Please remember that your actions and decisions will determine how the situation develops. And lastly, we are effectively running this exercise in real time. However, there will be a time jump in the middle. As far as communication is concerned, I will leave it to your facilitators at the end of this brief to provide any further information. But please do ensure that all your emails that you send to anyone uh, have the word exercise, exercise in the subject heading or if you are making a phone call, please ensure you state exercise, exercise at the start of the phone call to ensure uh, the scenario and elements of it do not leak out into the real world. And as far as possible, keep, please keep communication between known participants of the exercise. And that is why your facilitators are there to support you to ensure you know who is part of the exercise and who is not within your respective organisation. So in terms of evaluation, there's three key ways in which we're evaluating this exercise. We're starting with performance observations. We're not necessarily assessing individuals' performance at all. We are looking at the overarching performance of an organisation against the objectives. And don't worry, whatever's said by your evaluators is for your organisation only uh, and is not seen by any other organisations. At the end of the exercise, there'll be a hot debrief. That's really important to gather your, your immediate views and thoughts about how well the exercise went for you as an organisation. What did you learn as an organisation, a group of participants? And then in the coming weeks, your organisation, your facilitator, um, may well be in touch with you to conduct the cold debrief. And we've left it up to all organisations to, to deliver the cold debrief how they would like to. Um, but essentially, this is an opportunity to deep dive into what your organisation learnt, how you think the exercise went, um, having been given time to reflect on the exercise. So it's deliberately going to be a few days or weeks after the exercise. And what does that all mean? Well, at the end of this exercise, there'll be, we'll be producing two post-exercise reports. There'll be a sector-wide post-exercise report where we'll, we will bring together all of the lessons and learnings from across all the organisations, anonymously of course, 
and all of the assessments against the capability maturity model we spoke about to pull together what's gone on across uh, the last few weeks and months and of course during the exercise so that we can make recommendations and identify lessons uh, for uh, the improved capability across the financial sector of Hong Kong. And the second aspect to it will be a firm specific post-exercise report. And that's why it's really important, the role of your facilitators and evaluators to capture observations during the exercise and the hot debrief process so that we can collate that information and produce for you a specific post-exercise report for your firm and for your firm's eyes only. So all that's left to say is um, I hope you enjoy the exercise, good luck, have fun and ensure that you can get the most out of this exercise by really throwing everything into it uh, as a participant. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing all of the results out the other side. Thank you.